three. Welcome to Extreme Passport, everybody. I have got the greatest friend ever on. Her name's Jaja. She's got another name, but I'll let her tell you what that is. She is not only an actress, a supermodel, but she's, yes, she's a bartender, a crazy cool mom, and a jet setter all over the world. She's got some great stuff to talk about with us today. And Jaja, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, well, um, first of all, thanks for having me, Terry. Um, so me, so I was born in Virginia. I'm a military brat. Um, I lived the longest probably in Brooklyn. I was there for like 10 years. And from there, I've been all over the place. I was in London, Paris, Italy. And I've just been kind of traveling the world through the arts, man, just like doing, doing modeling, uh, runway, commercial, uh, doing some TV. And um, yeah, and lately just getting into some fitness stuff. So what are you doing oh, with the fitness? Bartending. I'm a bartender of life. Well, you're a bartender of life, you know, you know, yeah, everybody's a bartender of life. <laughs> it it comes without saying whether or not you're pouring your own or one for some, you know, pouring a drink for somebody. I think everybody pretty much is a bartender. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It comes with a qualification. Some people get paid for it because you can make a better drink than the other though. <laughs> Exactly. That that's what it is. Even and all those places, I, I and all those places where people want to know your name. You know, that's that's what it's all about, right? right I think exactly. if I remember right, um, when I met you, we met in a bar, and I watched you drink a Corona quicker than anybody I've ever seen drink a Corona in life. It's just like boom. Okay, next. <laughs> but, yes. You know, yes. But do you remember why? I don't because remember why. I know that we were getting ready to do a fashion show, and I guess you were trying to get your edge on to be able to, you know, change clothes and go do a runway show. Well, yeah, it was that, but it was because we're so used to, me and you were so used to New York City prices, right? Oh, exactly. So, which is like, like Oh, it was two for one or something for, like that, right? Yeah, and then we yeah, walked into one of those bar. weird things in New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, a Corona is like $3. We're like, $3? $3? <laughs> yeah, give me, give me a bucket of those. Come on, where are they at? <laughs> give me a bucket. Give, give me the case. <laughs> so in all seriousness, though, in between all the talents that you have, in between being an actress, being a model, being, uh, you know, you, now you just said, you know, health and fitness. What are you doing with that? Um, well, funny thing, bartending kind of led to it because bartending. We'll talk about City, that, though, because bartending it, seems to give you everything. It, it has. Any, anything that I've ended up that's gone into a passion of mine has literally led from bartending. So with with nutrition, it was because I was supposed to be working at this bar and I got lost. So I wandered into this like holistic doctor health place to ask for directions. Right. And the lady looks at me and she's like, your liver is sick. Just like that. And I was like, whoa. Don't you hate you when people fun? dime you out after a hangover? <laughs> well, see, that's the thing about New York. It's kind of like when you bartend in New York, it's definitely hard to be sober. So right. they're definitely I can appreciate a lot that. Right. who's and going on so I mean she was 100% right I had been dealing with a lot of health problems that I didn't even know what it was and so this is when I started I first found out just about the like power healing of just like apple cider vinegar and using fresh organic um spices um and things and just how they help cleanse your body um and so like now um this girl I've become friends with her and just through things that she um, suggested to me and things that she made me in her store, it was just amazing. And just like how my body changed. Like, I mean, it, it takes time. That's the problem with natural. So how long have you been doing this though? So you say it's made changes, made you feel better from everything what she told you. Oh man, specifically. So she had um, an apple cider vinegar recipe, which I guess people know it as fire cider. I hear about like it from people all the time. Apple cider is the cure for whatever ails your liver. Um, it's like, it's just wild how much apple cider vinegar makes you good. It's like, yeah. I guess the old adage, an apple day keeps the doctor away, I guess. I don't <laughs> exactly. know. So it works, yeah, but Hey, it works better in vinegar from what yeah. I hear. Yeah. And so like now, I mean, this is probably about like 12 to 15 years ago that I met her, but I've always stuck to this and it's, um, I mean, I think I sent you the recipe, but basically it's vinegar, honey, cinnamon. No, you sent me pepper. the one for the Manhattan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. But that's cool. It's there. okay. No, we're fine. Oh, there we go. Um, and um, it's just this thing where it's like you take a shot of it on empty stomach and it just it just absorbs into your bloodstream and balances out your um your bacteria gut. 
And um, the other thing that it helped me with was um, I had been battling eczema big right. time, which was, I guess, related to, I guess, again, you my got Irish in you. Yeah, it's all good. And uh, it cured it, man, because, I mean, I was about to go to the doctor and them give me steroids. And she's like, no, just take this. Oh, and she's like, and don't eat meat. <laughs> and don't eat meat. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a big answer there. But, yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm Irish of descent, and I've struggled with eczema all, all my life. So it's like, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to try this recipe out and see, you know, about this apple cider vinegar. You know, I mean, I've had people tell me, it's like, okay, well, you're Irish. Well, it is St. Patty's Day you know, coming around here. So it's like the same time. It's my birthday. It's New Year's. It's like the best day of the year for me. I don't consider yeah. any other holiday worthwhile talking about except for St. Patty's Day. And I actually claim that it's my day. So I don't really <laughs> care. And like the rest of the world could go dump green beer into the river in Chicago, but it's my day. Have fun, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So anyway, so outside of this, let's talk about you being a model. And like we said, you know, okay. you're telling me that like bartenders got you every cool gig in the world. So you're a very successful yeah. bartender, obviously, because yeah. not only do you get to pour drinks and take home a, you know, clear house bank full of tips every night, but the tips get wealthy because they pay you on the outside of the hours on the other side. And I don't know exactly. if every bartender thinks that way. But I know when I was bartending as a chef back in the early days when I first started, we won't talk about how many years ago that was. But I know that yep. like every connection that I made, and I don't know if it's because you're in your 20s, your 30s, you just know people. I think the older you get, less and less opportunities come along. But for a bartender, he's always got an ear to the, ear to the wall or to a customer's conversation that could lend, and especially in New York, to yep. some very rewarding opportunities, whether or not it yep. be work, or stocks or a new business venture or something cutting edge, Manhattan is one of those kind of places. I know that for sure. Yeah, definitely. Like, so my modeling, like my modeling adventure began um, in upstate New York. So like in Saratoga Springs, New York, um, my mom had a friend that was a designer and uh, one of her models had like called off. And uh, my mom was like, oh, well, my daughter's interested in modeling. Uh, I'll tell her to come down. And I had like no idea what was going on. So my mom was like, oh, you know, she's having a little fashion show. Uh, I told her you could do it. And I was like, all right. So I show up and it's in this like massive venue with right. like a raised runway. And it's right. like being from like the country up here. This is before I moved to the city. Sure. I was like so intimidated because it's all these girls from New York City. So you were a country like, girl, right? So we're, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at a supermodel as a country girl. And like, oh, did yeah. not know anything about anything about walking a runway or in high heels at all. Nothing. Like climbing yeah. ladders to a, a tree house made more sense to you. We don't use ladders. We just climbed a tree. You just climbed a tree. <laughs> we just climbed a tree. <laughs> oh, it's great. So, I mean, going into this, so keep on going. Explain to me how you go from a climbing a tree girl to, hey, well, I'm just going to put my butt uh, out there and put on skimpy clothes and high heels and try not to trip. <laughs> It's up, so I, I go to this fashion show in Saratoga and you know the girls were really sweet because they're they're rehearsing for the runway show. I was all intimidated and I was like, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how to walk this thing. And they're like, just get mad and stomp. I, was like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> and I would have to say, after so watching a lot of Heidi Klum and runway model fashion shows, it's like, I don't know, I catch a show sometime, it'll different stuff. And in between the, the friend that we both know, you know, I've, I've been in the fashion world and, and been a part and helped out and watched all this stuff go. And I have to say, yes, that's what it is. It's just attitude. And you're pissed off and you just stomp walking Massive down the damn attitude. runway. Um, and it's so like if you could dislocate a hip bone, you're doing it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly if something <laughs> breaks you know you're doing it right <laughs> exactly right <laughs> but yeah so there was a photographer there his name is Wes Bennett and um he was just at in the beginning he was taking the photos backstage and I guess I caught his eye so we kind of like jet up this conversation and he asked me about modeling and he was like you need to go to New York and it wasn't even like a like a cute like him being funny thing like he literally looked at me and was like no really you Seriously, need to go, you to, need to, go New to New York, York. and I was like whoa, like that's, you know, it was something that I wanted Did to do. Did you think he was I, full? What, do you think that he was full of stuff or no? No. So um, we, be, we ended up becoming like good friends because like 
all throughout my career. Like he's somebody that's been there that I can always go to for questions because he, I mean, he is a successful photographer and then he went on to run a magazine. Right. And um, so like he, he knew what he was talking about. So after the show, he ended up doing my photos and I ended up moving to New York like two weeks later. Right. Um, a funny story though. I like went to all the modeling agencies and I was 22 at the time and they're like, you're too old. I'm like, oh, I'm too old. And that's what wow. it So I was like, fine. So like I would have um, shoots here and there, but I was kind of like giving up. I was like, okay, what am I good at? I'm like, I'm good at bartending, right? All right. Yeah. So I, um, I ended up getting a job at a, a place in the village that was very much known for like, like all the girls that worked there were models and actresses. Right. And, um, and so like, you got to put yourself in the same, same breed of environment and animals walking, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want to walk it, you got to walk with the rest of them, you know? Exactly. And it was really funny because I'll never forget this night. It was like, I was over modeling. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make money bartend and try to be the greatest bartender. Right. And just try you're to throwing a pissy fit and stomping your feet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this, this guy comes in and he's a little stressed out and he's like, Oh, I need to come. He's like, Oh, I need a strong drink. I'm like, Oh, you're in the right place. I can help you with that. So we were chatting it up a little bit and he was just a real sweet guy. And he, he looks at me and he's like, have you modeled before? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm kind of over it. And he's like, well, I'm doing a photo shoot and I'd like you to be in it. I'm like, no, really, I'm over it. He's like, it's just next door. And I look at him I'm like, it's Friday night in New York City. Like, I can't just like leave the bar. And he's like, that's it. And he disregards what I says. And he's like, I'll be right back. And he goes and grabs the owner of right. the bar. <laughs> Right. So I'm looking at it like, uh oh, what's happening here? And the owner looks at me and he's like, Jeff, get out there. This guy needs you to go next door. And I'm like, okay. I go next door and it turns out that the guy that I had served is like the editing chief of New York Times. Right. <laughs> and they were doing this big shoot next door um, to do a spread on the owner and the establishment I was at. Right. And um, all these designers were in, like, I think the dress that I ended up wearing was like a Louis Vuitton dress. Right. And, like, you know, and you're um, just standing so, there pouring drinks. And then the next thing you know, you're a New York Times fashion model. I guess most importantly, pouring drinks with a good attitude. Because pouring I drinks can't with a good attitude. How exactly. many times people see gorgeous people. How many, <laughs> how many times I go to a bar and the bartender never talks to me and they never know that they could have been a guest on my show. That's a mess. You know, it's like, hey, if you were just nice and you talked to me, you never know how I could open up the window for you. Um, yeah. You know, and it's I have like, this about my life that's the kind of bartender i've been because no matter where i work <laughs> so you've enjoyed always- being a bartender and doors have opened for you and you know so let's get to this jet setting you're you're like oh, all man. over the world yeah, yeah. oh yeah and, and that like was- how old am i now and i'm like yeah let me think about that for a minute <laughs> <laughs> well from this one photo that i got this new york right. times photo um uh it was it was just a staple like there's always that one image in your book that it's like if i send this image out i'm gonna get booked exactly and that's where i got that photo okay from that shoot um well, yeah you got a great photographer fact- that captures you right because i noticed you know like i've you know ever since we met i've watched you on instagram i see your posts and everything and you do and all your work and i'm like wow look at her grow and it's just like so cool and i'm always like you know you, you know you see me it's like oh yeah that one rules us out it was like Oh yeah, I can see the intensity and and what that was. You might have been thinking about, hey, I just want to get a cup of coffee and my kid. Like, oh my god, I got three minutes. Okay, come on, take the shot. You know, it's, but these are the things that I truly understand about models. Are like, they are human beings. You know, you see those pictures. Right. Like, the the images that you give in your facial expressions are the ones that like you know the reason why I think you're just crazy cool uh, as a model <laughs> and as I've watched you all this time out not outside of your personality from when we first met and you're just like okay back to the Corona story, boom, 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 boom. okay, let's go do a runway show. It's like, but that's models, but same thing. It's like being a chef and, or, or ballet, you know, like artists are some of the craziest people in the world. Cause it's like one minute they're having cocktails and then next thing you know, they're performing, you know, and it's yeah. just like, boom, boom, boom. And it's, and it's that crazy kind of life. But because I think, artists thrive off of passion, no matter what exactly. the artist, like, it, it, Passion and art is that. Life. Yeah. Right. Yeah, most definitely. So yeah, so like as far as like jet setting, so from that photo, I did end up getting an agency. Um, and so um, they had sent us, my first time going overseas, they had sent us to Italy for, uh, for Milan fashion. Where'd you go in Italy? 
just Milan. <laughs> oh, Milan. Uh, okay, just Milan. You know, just Milan. Just, you know, that, that was, much I, other. I, I was I was terrible. I didn't know anything about Europe or traveling. So from there, I got to go to places because one of the girls from my agency was from France. So then she took me over. To, so we ended up going to Paris. And then I had a friend in the UK that had a clothing company as well. So I had come come to the UK. That was the first time I came to the UK. And then I modeled for their for his clothing company. So, of course, once I started doing shoots all over the world, then I come back to New York and then it's like, oh, everybody wants to shoot with you. It's like, I look exactly the same. Right. So nothing has really changed about it. No, it's the stigma. <laughs> it's it's the like, mystique. You know, it's like, oh, I'm shooting in London now. Oh, I just came back. Okay, well, I put some, uh, you know, uh, I dyed my, my, my hair pink. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm good. Let me shave half my head. All right, I'm even cooler now. It's yeah. like, I'm not going to wear makeup whatsoever and wear a $10,000 gown. Boom, I yeah. am king, you know, or queen of that. Anyway, <laughs> I don't even want to put it together. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, the interesting thing is, is like, I really, you know, I've always, like, it, this is something nobody knows about me. Like, when I was younger, I was an artist. So I like to draw and always sketch bodies and people and, and, and the like of that. But in scenes and scenarios, and I always wanted to become, like, and my first thing is, I'm going to be a fashion designer, like, when I'm in, like, junior high. I want to be a fashion right. designer. I want to dress a girl from her head to her toes. So, right. um, you know, I did that and it was like, I applied to, to the, what was it this guy, you know, the Chicago art Institute, different things, Flamingo beauty school. I was applying for scholarships, to all these different schools and didn't get accepted at any of them. None. I'm like, I, you know, nobody's interested in me doing this. So I'm like, all right, well, cool. So I didn't do it. But then came along the opportunity after I had done a few cool things. And then I get interviewed by a friend of ours. And he's a coacher, not only like, a, she's like royalty, she's a coacher, designer, she's like all these little crazy things in this little Russian body, like five foot tall. And, and she <laughs> yep, wants to interview yep. me. And then I find out like, oh, you have your own line of clothing. And then we become friends. And then I get to experience what it's like to be there. So what I didn't get to do all my life, I got the opportunity. And then I got to meet you, crazy goodness. And, <laughs> and, and, and like, here we are today talking. So you know, the, the wonderful world that I live in, uh, you know, as being a chef and the different things, it, that's the cool thing about a show now for me is like, you know, everybody I meet has got an interesting story. So like, yeah. now you're a supermodel, you got a Times Magazine, you click it off, you make your pay, and then you still keep on bartending. Cause I know rock and roll musicians that still are chefs and go play music on the road, making, doing world tours that are still chefs. Yeah. It's like the funniest thing ever. Yeah. It's like um, artists, whether or not you're in music, you're a model, you're a painter, a sculptor, some freak with a gallery up in the Lower East, you know, um, that the passion and the people that you meet, it's just a different world than the normal everyday suburbia. And then if yeah. you try to explain to some, someone back on the farm, yeah, are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, they wouldn't even know the first thing you're talking about. But, you know, in between me and you, it's like, I get you, you get me. I, hopefully my audience right. is what we're talking about. It's just that synergy <laughs> of like opportunity, passion, being our, you know, our, just being out there and being a part of being cool with people. That things Yeah. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the biggest part like is attitude. I think the biggest part is attitude because I've known girls definitely my entire life that it's like you see them and they're gorgeous. But because they're attitude, man. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yeah, so I work with a bunch happen. of models. Yes, it's, it's, it's terrible. Happen. Right. So I definitely, like, it's definitely helped me to keep, like, myself in check. Because, like, we all have those bad days where it's like, all right, I don't want to go to work. I don't feel like bartending. And right. then it's like, you know, you, you miss out on opportunity. If you can't find a way to shake it. You don't you know. It. You might have just, like, you know, bartended on the sheik of Saudi Arabia or one of them guys. And he's, like, comes in and she's like, you know what? Uh my pockets are too heavy and just drops a million dollars on the check you know oh, <laughs> like, whatever i, I, I know you're I waiting for that one bar job that was like that when i was when i was in london i actually bartended at this place get this it was a luxury it was a luxury um like a re residential building so it's right. like they had a movie theater they had a spa they had a bowling alley <laughs> they had they're not worried movie. about covid right now they're styling wherever they are Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because they had their own bar. So the bar was built in their building for them. Like right. the only way you could drink at this bar is if one of the residents let You're you You're there. Up. Membership kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like, so the people that, I mean, I'm, I'm not allowed to name drop at this job. Well, it's okay. But, they got places yeah, like that in Miami like too. The, like celebrities, um, parliament workers, uh, right. people that trust the queen. <laughs> like, right. 
it was and so it's like each day i turned up i'm like no i need to i need to show up to show up <laughs> exactly <laughs> you don't know, you don't know. And, it, and once again like i had some really really blessed opportunities from that and had made some really good lifelong friends um and it was about attitude man it was about attitude so what does Jaja have going forward. You got the bartending. Are you just looking for that mm -hmm. next cool meeting in the bartending? You're taking time. I know you got the little baby boy doing a thing. How's, how's the whole motherhood, being a model, being a bartender? How, do, how does that all work for you? Oh, man, I have to stay. So, you have to take a minute so to think about that So what's next for me now is I've, I've really done some more shots. I, I met some, I've recently done some more shots. So I right. am still doing modeling. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing it more as like, I'm branding myself because right. like back in the day when I was modeling, it's like, okay, if you want to be booked, you need to look like this. Your hair needs to be like this. Da, da, da. And it's more so that I'm, I'm doing it to stand out as a brand. You're building so your that, own like, identity as a brand like, oh, who Jaja is. Girl. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. And, um, and I, um, one of the greatest gigs that I had was when I was in England and, um, I, w I was on the World Cup commercial, the Adidas World Cup commercial that they just had. Okay. And that was one yeah. of the things I learned, like the more like distinct that you were, um, that they could distinguish you from a crowd, right. the, the more they were picking people out and the more those people were making. So it's like, right. if you could define yourself with a look that's like, no, that is just her. It's, it's going to kill in TV and modeling and in commercial and all that stuff. So that's what I'm doing now. So I began shoots for that. Um, as far as bartending and, and modeling motherhood, what works out really great for me is um, it, it's so easy to be like, be home and still make money. So it's like, so my bar job right now, I only work three days a week, but I'm right. working overnight. So it's like, I still get to see my kid during the day. Right. I still get to put him down for his naps and be with him. And right. then as far as modeling, like, um, you know, when I, when I do a shoot, I just, I can just show up do it three, five hours and then be home and bang it out. And then the rest is editing and you know, everything else is done over the computer. So none right. of it is really like, like it's, it's really good for having a home life. Having well, those cool. two things. I don't think a lot of people understand how, how much being a model like that is like, it's like that. Cause I have, you know, outside of you, it's like with, with you know, with our friend um, and other friends that I have, you know, I know a lot of models and, and it's mm -hmm. sort of, it's like that business. Um, I know some models, like you're saying, they identify their brand, who they are, you know, they only do sort of a specific genre, but then that's them, but they're able to associate any brand with it because they've identified themselves as a brand. And especially, yeah. you know, if, if we look at these TikTokers and, and what this new term that's come out and you hear it everywhere, influencers. Okay. They got yeah. a million kids, yeah. they're 20 years old. Who are you? And, and, and like it, five weeks ago, you weren't even on TikTok, but now yeah. you're like, you can make a quarter million dollars a year with the space that's on your show, you know, is or yeah. whatever you want to put out there in the feed. How much yeah. money will 30 year olds be making uh, from consumers? It's like for me to sit and think about watching TV now, why? It was like a TikTok and I rolled through it and I sit there for 30 minutes waiting for the next wow moment. And it's like, who does it better? Or like, who did that? <laughs> who did that better? They're like, yeah. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. My daughter showed it to me and I'm like, <laughs> I like TikTok. It was like, yeah, am I over 30? <laughs> yup. Should I be on there? But I'm there. Yeah. And I'm going to learn how to do it better, but am I going to lip sync? No. <laughs> you know, it's like the whole thing with the like pointing to the things, you know, here I am. Okay. I'm a yeah. white guy from America. Can I cook? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, but do I want to spend my time doing that? Because I'm busy with the show. But it's like I think about it when I look through. And I've actually found some mm -hmm. upcoming guests. And, and I'm looking for those influencers that want to be on yeah. the show to say what it's like for them. Because like you're saying with your job, like they don't even have to leave the house. They just sit in their bedrooms and jump up and down and get a million followers and make money and just talk about whatever they want to. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. do scripts from an old show. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you, you know, gonna take, take your daddy or something. I gotta be I everywhere. Know. I like to go, go, go. <laughs> so, are you on? Are you on TikTok? No, I try. I had it for like a day. I tried. I was like, this but you'd be crazy right. fun because you're just like so energetic. On, like on interviews, you'd be like, you know, it'd be crazy. I'm, I'm still trying to like. Over, I'm still trying to deal with Snapchat because some. I got some girls that I work with that are like 19 to 20. They're like, oh my gosh, you have to have Snapchat to talk. I'm like, why can't I just text you? Right. Can I just text you? <laughs> so I Snapchat. So you don't call people, you just like text. It's like, you know, it's just hard for me too. 
I, I don't, I don't know what my, like my landline number, I don't use it. It's like, I call people on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, you know, people call yeah. me through apps. Yeah. It's like funny. I don't even use it's like so a crazy. phone. I don't even know it's what so it's for. Less, it yeah. But yeah, but like to be in this industry, you have to, cause I know there are some modeling agencies too. Like before they even care what you look like, they'll be like, well, how many Instagram followers do you have? Exactly. Well, how many Snapchat? It was like, what? I get but the I same have, thing. Like, real friends. I don't have right. internet friends. I have real friends. I have <laughs> real <up>. friends. Yeah. <laughs> I have real like, followers. <laughs> I didn't buy them. Um, yeah, so but it's, it's when, a thing. So when we think that, about, you why. know, when we think about all that, you know, and people traveling, I guess they don't go anywhere. They just jump inside their phone and that's how they travel these days. But, you know, for you, <laughs> in, in between the best, worst, and your favorite travel experience amongst all the crazy wild places you've been in your career, and everything to do what's one of the worst experiences you've ever had traveling oh my my worst experience was the first time i went to england i like didn't research anything and i was like a real stupid american right and so um so i didn't realize that the money was different oh, really? and at the time the pound was real real strong so it was like one pound was like two american dollars kind of right. thing so right. I just remember, I'm just like chilling in London, spending money, spending money. And, and then like, I ran out of money. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't know what happened. I thought the currency <laughs> was like, more than that. I thought it was like Mexico oh, and a peso. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm running around thinking everything's so cheap when it's like double. So, which is nice because that's how I ended up meeting my cousin. Because I like call my parents. I'm like, yo, I messed up. And they're like, well, we have this cousin we've never spoken to. He lives at this place. And so I ended up meeting him. And that turned into a story because... Um, I didn't know anything about visa laws or anything. So I, I went and I ended up staying with my cousin and we ended up getting along. Like he's a really super cool guy. And he's like, well, get a job. So I got a job as a bartender. Right. So you and just you know, went to, I, you just went to London and got a job. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It's like the heart right on Bond street. And so I worked there for two weeks cause they do this thing where like, oh, you have to have a trial. So they'll, they'll have you work there for right. a week. And then you do all this stuff, right? The paperwork and everything, right? So they're like, yeah, we love you. We want you to stay, da, 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 da. So I started working. They're like, oh, by the way, we just need your visa. And I remember looking at this guy and going, a visa? And I literally go, what's that? Right. He goes, what's a visa? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you can't work here without a visa. I'm like, well, you didn't say anything when I hired you. I literally walked in there and he, he looked at my resume. And he goes, you're a bartender. And I go, yeah. And he goes, from Manhattan. And I go, yeah. And he goes, and you want to work here? And I go, yeah. And he goes, you're hired. That was the whole conversation. Oh my God, it was good. I was in this bar in London for like two weeks. They're like, yeah, this is illegal. You can't do this. So I'm like, oh, okay. Spoiler. <laughs> so in the end, I ended up coming back home. But right, right. Yeah, now I know. The second time I went, I had my P's and Q's crossed or whatever. <laughs> okay. Was there like well, see, years. this is something. It's like when, when I talk to, you know, people that I have on the show, it's like, these are the things I ask. It's like, you know, what are those things that like, you know what? I'm going to London. I'm going to be a bartender. I heard her on the show, but she left that part out. Oh, I need a visa. Well, now they know. Yeah. So it's all good. See, there's value to this show. It's beyond anybody's, uh, even my own imagination, the things that I heard, because I wouldn't think about that either. You know, it's like, okay, like, well, it's like UK. They speak English, so why can't I work there? You know? yeah. right. oh, man. Why can't I get on their medical system and get things done? You know, it's all good. They got free insurance there. It's great. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was a doozy. That was a doozy. I'm trying to think. Maybe my, I think my best experience was, um, was probably um, working TV there. Like um, I was, I did a TV show there and it was a crime reenactment show. Nice so done. it's a real crime that happened. So what crime did you commit? <laughs> uh, it wasn't me. It was the other wife. Um, but it was like somebody murdered. Were somebody you the girlfriend? Somebody for insurance money. You were the but girlfriend? But the thing that was really funny was, um, I guess in England with the TV companies, when you're filming a show that's American, there's got to be a certain percentage of actual Americans. Because, right. you know, there's a lot of British actors that can easily do our accent. Of course. Um, so it was really fun um, because that was one of the few times that I actually ran into other Americans when I lived in the UK. And um, the thing that was so funny on set was that the British people that were acting that had to do the American accent, once they found out that I was actually American, they didn't want to do it. Really? I was like, oh my gosh, do the accent. They're like, no, no, they don't want to do it. Like, it was so embarrassing for them to do it in right. front of me because I was American. I was like, I guess that's true. Because I mean, like when we were kids, we'd always be like, oh, let's talk British, you know? Like, <laughs> right. And if I did that to one of my English, I would feel real stupid too. <laughs> <laughs> so 
but um, it was such a great experience because I, um, there's just such a different attitude just in the fashion world and in the TV world in England. Like, I just think the English culture in general is just so brilliant and so sweet and just how they communicate with each other on a daily basis just in life. And to experience that in like a professional setting, like where I'm, where I'm doing a craft that I love was just amazing. It was just amazing. So um, it's funny to go to different countries and do your art and then just to see how it's accepted in different ways. So yeah, I think that's, I think it's very interesting. England is England is the shit. I love England. <laughs> I love it. It's good. I guess it sounds like it when you're going back. Uh, maybe not uh, for a bit. <laughs> you're gonna be I'm gonna hang out for a minute, take a sabbatical. But uh, no, anyway, really, you know, talk I, about I really that. Like in, any place, it's like you know, where where would be one place in the world that you could go tomorrow if somebody came in and like had a cocktail and said, "I need something stiff," and say, "You know what." I've got this going on. What would you want that guy? What, what place would have to come out of this or woman or guy's mouth and say, you know what? You're doing this tomorrow that you would do. Where would you go? Oh man. Um, I really want to go to Scotland. <laughs> I have really? never been, even though I live I think you need a visa there too, though. I do. I do. I actually still have a visa, it's <laughs> That's good. Five, but I still got it. But then, uh, you know, um, you're not up for eating haggis, though, are you? Hey. Hey. <laughs> it's just like, I'll try anything. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Oatmeal and, and, and animal organs with blood, you know, it's a, you know, in a, in a, oh, in a, goat, that's, in a stomach that's sack. black jelly. Yeah. No, nah, it's not. Like, it's black, worse. Uh, it's worse. Pudding, black pudding, they call it, or black jelly. Well, black pudding, yeah. yeah. So I'm a big friend, fan of that. Uh, Boudin, no, no, Boudin. I'm not up for trying that. I'm yeah, Boudin, blood, blood sausage, yeah. I love yeah, it. No, no. Yeah. I, yeah. So one of my your face like, tells me at all. Okay. Yeah. He went on his lunch break and I was like, what did you have for lunch? He's like, oh, I had eggs. He's like, I had the Scottish breakfast and, then, and black pudding. I go, or black jelly, whatever. So I'm like, oh, is that chocolate? And he's like, black chocolate. Pudding, yeah. he's like, I'm crazy. I'm like, so then what is that? And when he told me, I was like, all right, nah. nah <laughs> no, you're out. Burger. So, so what burger. is your favorite food, Jazza? I mean, like, we're done talking about, you know, blood pudding. I know I'm not going to cook that for you. So, like, if I was cooking, cooking, cooking you dinner, what would I be in store for for you to, to have to go to the store and get you? What's your favorite meal? Um, I have to say, I, and maybe it's because when I was in England, I was like, there are no good burgers here. You guys cannot make a good burger to save me. Okay. I'm like, I got home, like, every burger. <laughs> Why, do cows have wings or something? I mean, what's the difference? I don't know. Maybe because it's healthier. Maybe they're oh, just maybe. too healthy. I'm like, I need some grease. I need, need like, some grease. <laughs> I need grease and salt. It's and like I need fat. something greasy that's deep fried and more grease and then put in a bun and then take that and wrap that and then deep fry that and put some grease and then pour bacon grease on it. That's, what, it. that's the ticket. Yeah, I know that's what those exactly. are. But that's um, because so you're, getting, you're getting you're getting home at three o'clock in the morning after bartending all night and you need it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm uh, with you on that. It's like White Castle is my, is my biggest thing. It's like, Oh my God, if you're eating at three o'clock in the morning get 24 pack of uh, White Castle and you're South Orange, you know, it's like, come on, man. There's nothing better. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Now you got me thinking I have a White Castle in a minute. White Castle, <laughs> like a strawberry soda. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's just, just like the best. How when, you, when you leave the U S for a period amount of time and it's like most countries are healthier than us. And it's like you're, you live this healthy lifestyle. And then, like, when you get back to the U.S., you're like, yo, I miss KFC. And in and out burgers. Like, <laughs> yeah, where are they? Oh, man. I must have gained, like, 15 pounds the first week I was home. <laughs> I can appreciate it. It's just like, oh, this just tastes good. So, oh, man. Like, out, of everything, everything in the, out of everything in the world. So, you know, making a burger for you is not a problem. I can handle that. It's like I make the best burgers <sighs> in the world. And I'll make sure, like, we'll just inject it with fat and then put bacon in it and, you know, get duck comfy yeah. fat and scrape that off, shove that in the middle of it and ball it all up and then just deep fry it and it'll be fine. <laughs> Throw it on a oh, little crusty bun. Um, so how's Tuesday? <laughs> how's Tuesday? It's perfect. Yeah, the Tuesday, day, you know, give me a burger today and I'll pay you on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> you know, wimpy. Uh, but, you know, with everything else that's um, like really cool in the world, I mean, I, I think it's just like, you know, so incredibly interesting, you know, how your life has gone from, climbing trees to new york times to you know just doing tv ads and you know modeling crazy clothes i mean the first time i saw you on the stage i was like holy christ check this girl out 
um, you know, you just had attitude. You're just like walking through there. It's like, holy Christ, I don't get out of the way. I might get stabbed. Um, but then <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's like the funny thing. It's like, this is what I look like when I'm not smiling. But then, okay, I, hey, I'm a cool person when I, when I am smiling, you know, and talking. But I think people are mystified by that from magazine covers and models and all that. It's when they start to talk to you. Oh, you, that's your voice? Oh, really? Wow. Oh, you, 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 you sit at home on a Friday night, like for weeks at a time and nobody calls you or talks to you and just like paint by numbers. Really? This is so cool. It's just like normal people, but you see this, you know, Dior advertisement or Louis Vuitton or the Gucci, the, um, the mysticism when you're looking at it like, wow. And then you yeah. think about the romance, the sex, and the whole show, and the movie. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the reason why I want to do this. And then you're just normal people, and it's cool. But the, what the cameras do, the, the, the producers do, and being able to do that. And I'm not talking about Photoshopping. I'm just talking about, the, you know, the, the mood and the creativity of it. And it's, as you said yeah. earlier, you know, it's your art. And, and I think yeah. that, you know, from body posture, the ability to, I guess, as an actor – or an actress that, you know, it's in that, that image that you project and it's a thought that you have, but when a camera captures you, cause I know from my own experience, I'm like, Oh my God, I look so miserable. But I truthfully was happy that day when I took that picture, but that's what they were after. But, and they said that. So I staged myself for, for that picture uh, mentally, but not everybody could do yeah. that. And, and I, yeah. I admire the fact of models being able to put themselves in a place to represent a brand or a feeling or a moment that, that's art in its own self. Um, outside of a musician playing a guitar or drums or singing uh, or, or a ballerina dancing. Um, just to stand still, I think is harder. <laughs> to, 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 it definitely okay, takes practice. Do I look right? <laughs> and, and that kind of thing. You know, is it hard for yeah. you that way? Do you oh, well, think about I, it? I think it just takes practice. Like, it, it's something that the more you do it, um, the more it's easier just to get into that zone and get into that mood faster. Because by far, like the first time I ever did a photo shoot, I'm sure I was feeling all kinds of like insecurities and weird, probably got a bunch of weird photos that are somewhere out there archived. Right. And it, it's just over the course of the time where as I get to know like my face and my angles, because everybody has a bad angle. Like I know if I'm staring straight at the camera, my it's going to look bad. Right. <laughs> like, without like a kind if of I don't have a three quarter like, pose, it's messed up. Right. <laughs> and so it's like, it's just over, over time that you just start to coin like, how to pose and what looks good and what looks bad or in and, and a lot of times it's just like the chemistry with the photographer the way they're shooting and and you just balancing yourself off of that so it it definitely helps experience I think really has a big part to it um, which so, I was really surprised about I thought that oh it's just pretty girls in front of my camera but actually it's not it's work know, pretty girls I in front of it's camera. long hours it's terrible oh it's long hours I mean 18 um, 20 hour days I mean it's crazy it's something that I enjoy because that was the thing. It was like with bartending, I know that I always have like a good source of income. So right. I will never have to take on a job where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's going to suck as far right. as like with modeling or, oh, I don't really want to do that. So that way that whatever job I am taking on as a model, it's like, it's always going to be something I'm passionate about because it's not like. So I a target ad that. for Easter is definitely not on your rule of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't see you we won't see you on the next target campaign you know putting out a spring sundress or something like that you're hey, still laughing actually, you're like you know, well, you know i'm a mommy now i can pull that off you know it's cool the, martha, the, the, the whole martha stewart line of uh kitchen plateware you know in a, in a, in a red dress you know it's all cool i just think oh, about yeah, the funny those things are the like good that ones. no those are the good gigs yeah 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 those yeah, yeah, yeah. The they pay and they're steady whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, more so i'm trying to think like th what are gigs that i hate um uh, i don't like music videos i tried no. them don't like especially hip -hop. nope don't like nope. it at all there's no amount of money you can pay me what's oh, wrong with it, it? Uh, I, it's the attitude on set, um, yeah. and I've run into it multiple the times. Vibe. So it's just not okay. in the USA. Like I said, that could be different in a different well, country. Yeah. Um, but here I just knew that wasn't it's my okay. forte. That made um, you you got I love showroom gigs. I love modeling in the showroom, and I typically love runway. Most runway. So on the runway, how many heels have you broken stomping trying to break a hit to impress None. buyers? You've None. never broken a heel once. Not once. Not it's once? really funny. I got really religious about my shoes. I have the same runway shoes that I've had for probably like 10 years. 
Right. And these these two pairs of shoes are the ones, unless the designers give me another pair. But well, that's my like point. Yeah, choose. you've never broken a designer's shoes though, no. So within within reason too. Now, have you ever damaged any of the clothing in the quick change, getting in and out of it, and the designer's like, "Oh crap." Um, at that New York Times shoot, I, I don't know why I asked that, but I would thought that you might have a story. I I got lipstick on the dress, but I think like those clothes. I I think those clothes just stay like in the showroom. Like it wasn't a big deal because nobody said anything. Right. <laughs> But I remember, and, and that was the thing, because I was all, like, psyched out because it was New York Times, blah, 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 blah. But, yeah, I definitely got lipstick on my dress. <laughs> and they never said anything, and you walked away then? No. Have you got to no. keep any of the cool, crazy clothes modeling? Uh, uh, well, for my, one of my favorite designers, Miss Olga, I, oh, yeah. I did get to keep a purse. I just had a lovely purse from her. Um, I didn't keep, so at the New York Times shoot, I didn't get to keep anything. But what kind of happened was when the article came out, um, part of the article was they asked me what my beauty regimen was. Mm -hmm. And um, because if you if you look at the photo, it's a big close up of my face. So it's like sure. a big juicy red lip in my eye. <laughs> yeah, right. And I said that in my beauty regimen, I said that I love Victoria's Secret lip gloss. Right. So I shit you not. I came to work the next day at my bar right? and there's a guy there and he's like, Oh, I have a package here from Victoria's secret. And I'm thinking, Oh my gosh. So now the owners are ordering, like ordering stuff downstairs right. and then having us take it upstairs. I'm like, this is getting ridiculous. And I was right. like, well, who's that? You know, with attitude. I had right. attitude. It was like early in the morning. Right. And um, so everybody calls me Jaja and he's like, well, the package is for Janisha Lovins. And I'm like, he said my full name, you know, like when you're in trouble. Right. <laughs> you're <laughs> like, oh, shit, what I do? So I was like, oh, well, that's me. So he's like, okay, well, then sign for it. So I signed for it, and he left. And I open up this box, and it's like like $500 worth of Victoria's Secret products. Well, see, that's Victoria's what you need Secret, to be doing. Like, Thank you so much for mentioning us in the article. We see, there's a whole the new photo. reason for you to go Here's back on some, TikTok. Here's some things <laughs> for you to try. Let us know what you think. And then they left me their number and everything. So I got to thank you from Victoria's Secret. Well, that's awesome. See how that's things like, work. Quit now. <laughs> it's that's awesome. That. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, knew that I didn't get anything as far as clothes wise, but I did get a box of Victoria's Secret products. And yeah, that was pretty cool. That's awesome. That's definitely the coolest thing that's happened modeling, I think, by far. <laughs> so like, what, like, what's the worst food you've ever ate on a model set? Like, like you go all day and not eat? Ice. ice? Seriously, ice. Just ice? Oh, they had to be kidding me. Ice cubes had, all day? Because, you know, the girls, they want to stay skinny, so they just eat sure. ice. That's crazy. Ice. I was like, oh, this is just not for me. Hilarious. Yeah, ice. Ice definitely the worst. <laughs> so you left that gig? You're just like, I'm not shooting this, man. I'm not eating ice all day. Oh man, that one no. But I have walked out of model. I walked out of a runway show once. I was like, "Y'all, why'd you walk off a runway show?" Like, They're too disorganized. Too disorganized. We had, we had rehearsals, and and each time we had a rehearsal, it was like everybody had their outfit. And I was like, "Where's mine?" She's like, "Oh, I haven't finished making it yet." I'm like, "All right, last rehearsal. Where's my outfit? I haven't finished." Show up to the show. She's like sewing it on me. I'm like, "Excuse me, I'll I'll be I'm gonna go." She's like, "Oh, you're gonna be right back." I'm like, "No." No, I'm I'm gonna go. Uh, you know, I'm not a pin cushion. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna go because I was right. like I'm not doing this. I'm not walking down. You, you just like no. Because at the end like, of the day, it's the design <clears throat> brand too, but it's also your brand. So this comes like, to my mind. What mishaps have you had going down the runway? The embarrassing mishaps then, because I'm like she's sewing that on you. It's like okay, thread pops. You're just standing naked in the middle of the runway. I uh, I, I actually haven't had any. No. No, I, it's, no. Well, that's cool. No, I've, I've never, never happened. I've never, I've never She says, it. knock on wood. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> it's all yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been really good. So you've never I've torn been... a hem or anything like that where it's like ripped or the dress or anything like that? Never? Oh. I've, See, I've been to the world right now, as Jaja says, I am the best model there is because I won't damage your clothes. <laughs> I did put lipstick on it, but it comes out. Get a good cleaner. It comes out. It comes, comes out. out. Promise you. I got a recipe yep. for that. It's oh, apple cider okay. vinegar. 
exactly. Baking soda. Baking soda <laughs> cures everything. <laughs> well, anyway, tell me, tell me, you know, we wrap this up. Tell me, tell me one thing that the world doesn't know about you that you would like for them to know. Like the okay, thing so about you. before I ever wanted to model, I was a dancer and I danced for years. So one of my newest projects is I have a best friend that is a Zumba instructor. So we're trying to launch kind of like this program and, and like we started with the Instagram website where it's like us doing Zumba together. So it's like best friends that are moms that are trying to like rebuild their like postpartum bodies, but in a healthy way, but also in a way where women are encouraging women because it's like, it's really hard. Like when you're trying to get fit by yourself to be focused, but when you have somebody that's gone through the journey, especially like, you know, your body is so different after you have a baby. Right. But somebody that can go through that journey with you and help you and encourage you and to do it through dance, because both of us were dancers in the past, you know? Right. And um, so Zumba has just been like our get fit, like it's our get fit go to man. And it's also like it's our way to like clear our mind, because, you know, when you've got to learn steps, you're so focused. And it's just been um, it's just been such a such a a blessing to us as far as like. To, to launch this to just be able to encourage people because that's what I'm like I'm like what am I doing that's actually giving back and I was like well this could be that thing where it's like encouraging other women just to encourage because girls can be tough to girls sometimes which is really right. stupid because we all have the same insecurities we all go through the same journeys and instead of like pointing each other a finger at each other we should help each other of course so, yeah so everybody should help that. each other yeah I mean that's yeah. the premise of my show and the reason why we do even talking right now is like out of everything that we discuss and we talk to each other about that, you know, there's something in the message that, uh, that, that somebody says, you know, need a visa to go to London. Okay. You know, <laughs> Hey, I need to go on TikTok so I can get me some free Victoria's secret. If I just say, I like Victoria's secret, they'll send you a box of $500 worth of makeup. Um, you know, all the crazy cool things. And that baking soda takes lipstick out of couture fashion designers dresses. It's all good. Um, and, and that, You've got this crazy cool Manhattan uh, bacon, maple, <laughs> maple bacon. Oh, Manhattan. yeah, the maple bacon Manhattan. Yeah, I like set things on fire at the bar. I right. like set things on fire. And we yeah. even, the way they make it. So we have, we use bourbon and then we use maple syrup and bitters. Um, but we actually have the bacon like half cooked so that after I finish, you know, stirring up the whiskey and putting it in the glass, I actually set the bacon on fire so they that the bacon the at the bar drizzles the drink. Right. Yeah. So it's got this nice smoky like bacon flavor. And then of course we garnish it with the bacon, but it's so good. I was very surprised at the things. That's that my kind of Bloody Mary. <laughs> that's a good, that's a, that's a good oh. Bloody Mary. Oh, that's without, a good without the tomatoes, just the bacon and the bourbon. It's good. Oh yeah. Yeah. We like, we like, we like setting stuff on fire at my bar. Yo, the Berlin, you have to come when the Berlin is like legit speaking. And, and where, and what, and what, and what, what city so is all that the in? Bars we're all trained mixologists. What city so, is that in? Uh, we're in Troy. Troy, New in York. Troy. So, and the oh, name yeah. of the bar is again? The Berlin. The Berlin in Troy, everybody. You go there for oh, the yeah. make, make, burnt maple bacon Manhattan. It's got to oh, be yeah. the most coolest thing ever. Can't get it anywhere else. So and, and everything in the world, uh, there's really crazy cool stuff. We got some uh, really, you know, uh, the, the bio ways that you can uh, see uh, Jaja, Miss Janisha, and what she's doing up in Troy as a mixologist and, and follow her career as I have. It's just so amazing. Uh, being a mom, you know, next we're probably going to see her on Target in a red dress, you know, putting out Martha Stewart pots and pans. But, you yes. know, you never know. Yes. You know, I'm heavy selling over here as a manager. But anyway, you know, one of the <laughs> coolest people I've ever met off the cuff, and I swear to you, it's like so much fun. Um, you know, follow her and, and come to my blog post and, and the podcast, uh, you know, site. And um, you're just going to love her as much as I do. I know, but there's no way you can. <laughs> She's just so full of passion and fun and positive, And it's just the coolest thing ever. But um, everybody, this is Extreme Passport. Until next time, cheers. <laughs>